This video is inspired by my favorite documentary by Selena Gomez called My Mind and Me and is both an educational and an awareness video regarding systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE. SLE is an autoimmune disease mediated by autoantibodies and immune complexes, which target nearly every organ in the body. You must have heard of celebrities who've had SLE, such as Michael Jackson and Selena Gomez. SLE is an interplay of genetic factors, immunological factors, hormonal factors, and environmental factors, such as smoking, UV light exposure, infections, and drugs. Let's have a look at the pathophysiology of SLE. It involves injury to the body's own cells, leading to damaged cell proteins and DNA. The damaged cells usually try to repair themselves. If they can't, they undergo apoptosis or programmed cell death. The immune system serves to clear these apoptotic cells, and this is usually done by macrophages. However, if the apoptotic cells are not cleared effectively, nuclear material is exposed to the immune system. As a result, the immune system becomes sensitized and will attack the body's own proteins. Some people who develop SLE are seen to have a deficiency in some complement proteins, such as C1, C2, C3, and C4. These complement proteins help macrophages clear up apoptotic cells, but their deficiency can lead to apoptotic cells not being cleared effectively. And this causes the immune system to become sensitized. Sensitization begins with immature antigen-presenting cells picking up nuclear material from apoptotic cells, such as double-stranded DNA, histones, SM protein, Rho protein, etc. These antigens are displayed on the surface of the antigen-presenting cells and are presented to the helper T cells. This leads to the helper T cell activation and T helper 2 cell maturation. T helper 2 cells promote humoral or antibody mediated immune response, thereby leading to B cell activation and plasma cell production. The plasma cells produce autoantibodies, which target the antigens picked up by the antigen presenting cells, such as double stranded DNA, SM protein cardiolipin, histone, etc. The autoantibodies target nuclear proteins and are collectively called anti-nuclear antibodies or ANA. They can target any cell since these antigens are found in all cells. This leads to inflammation. The autoantibodies may cause inflammation by binding to the antigen directly on the cell surface, resulting in complement activation and cytokine release, or the inflammation can be caused by immune complex formation and deposition in organs. This inflammation leads to organ damage, which further causes a cascade of damaged cells, and the cycle continues. SLE is a multi-system disorder, and patients present with various systemic manifestations. In addition to fever, fatigue, and myalgias, the most common manifestations include UV-sensitive butterfly rash, a discoid rash, and photosensitivity. Cardiac involvement includes pericarditis, myocarditis, hypertension, and pericardial effusions. Pulmonary involvement includes pleural effusions, pulmonary vasculitis, and interstitial fibrosis. Hematological involvement occurs in half the patients and includes chronic anemia and leukopenia. Neurological involvement is common and includes seizures, headaches, and peripheral neuropathy. Gastrointestinal involvement includes vomiting, nausea, abdominal pain, hepatomegaly, and abdominal serositis. Renal involvement is seen in at least one-third of SLE patients and is termed as lupus nephritis, where the antibody complexes deposit at the glomerulus. This can lead to renal failure. Musculoskeletal findings include polyarthralgias, Raynaud's phenomenon, osteopenia, and osteoporosis. Diagnostic tests or investigations for SLE include baselines such as full blood count, serum electrolytes, LFTs, RFTs, ESR, and CRP levels. Urine microscopy and urinary albumin to creatinine ratio are important to monitor kidney function. SLE serum markers must be ordered, which include anti-double-stranded DNA, anti-histone, anti-Rho, anti-SM, and anti-NRNP. Extractable nuclear antigens, anti-cardiolipin, and anti-rheumatoid factor are also ordered. Serum markers associated with disease flare-ups 
involve decreased complement protein levels and increased anti-double-stranded DNA levels. Remember to rule out drug-induced SLE for someone with no history of SLE who recently began a new drug and has positive ANA. Management of SLE involves general principles such as avoiding UV light exposure, wearing protective clothing and sunscreen, and using vitamin D and calcium supplements. Reducing weight and avoiding smoking will also prove to be useful. Pharmacological management involves the use of tacrolimus, which is a calcineurin inhibitor that inhibits interleukin-2 production and function and suppresses T-cell activity. Mycophenolate and azathioprine reduce lymphocytic activity of both B and T cells. Glucocorticoids suppress the inflammatory response. Belimumab is an IgG monoclonal antibody given intravenously to prevent B cell activation. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are prescribed to treat musculoskeletal pain associated with SLE. Since hypertension is a common complication of SLE, antihypertensives are prescribed to control blood pressure.